one of the Akan language. If it's Hausa, it's the Hausa. So we know that this is the language we speak in Africa. Devoid of our differences, different ethnic groups, different ethnic backgrounds. But this is what we all speak when we go to the market. This is the African language we all speak when we go to conferences. We can even confuse white people, confuse our slave masters. But we go for meetings, we speak English. Our parliament houses are throwing English jargons, French jargons here and there. We can't even conduct an official business, official meeting in Africa in our own language. No, man, it doesn't happen. Now people are rooting, people have been rooting for Swahili. For over a decade now, people have been rooting for Swahili. The last time I checked, the last time I saw a video, someone rooting for Swahili to be the official language of Africa was Julius Balema in South Africa. So if you go to South Africa right about now, because of Julius Malema, Swahili is now taught in schools. Yes, every South African must be able to speak Swahili according to their curriculum. At least maybe East Africa choose one, West Africa choose one, South Africa choose one. And then we start from somewhere, reach a point and come to a compromise, choose one to use. Rather than boasting about our slip master's language, if you can't speak English, yo, no man, wabong. Now let's talk about the Swahili language. 40 after seven already. Wow. I have 10 minutes to do this. No, 20 minutes to do this, yeah, 20 minutes. Now, Swahili has a native name. Swahili has a native name. It got corrupted to Swahili, but it was originally, it is known by its native name, Kiswahili. That is the native name of Swahili, Kiswahili. It looks like almost everything in Africa is corrupted. Corrupted one way or the other. You have the name, but you have to go look for the origin of the name, track the origin, and then get the native name before you know that no man. Even the one you're calling, you're mentioning, you're using, is not the original. Swahili is the popular, is what we know. But it is also known by its native name, Kiswahili. Kiswahili. It is the native language of the Waswahili, Waswahili people, Waswahili who have found along that they are found along the East African coast. They are found along the East African coast. Due to concerted efforts by the government of Tanzania, Swahili is one of the three official languages. The others are English and French of the Eastern African community, that's Eastern African countries, namely Burundi, Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Rwanda, South Africa, Tanzania, and Uganda. And that's some step taken. South Africa, I mean, I mean, West Africa should begin to think same. West Africa. These countries have decided, they've all are, are agreed, they've all decided to settle on Swahili. Due to concerted efforts by the government of Tanzania, Swahili is one of the three official languages, the others being English and French, of the Eastern African community or countries, namely Burundi, Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda. It is a lingua franca of the other areas in the African Great Lakes region and Eastern and Southern Africa, including some part of Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi, where I played, I mean Malawi, where the reggae song before I started this segment came from, you know, Gedis Chalamande is from Malawi, Mozambique, the southern tip of Somalia, and Zambia. Swahili is also one of the working languages of, Afri of the African Union, and that's great. When I read that, I was like, wow. 
Swahili is also one of the working languages of the African Union. When the Chinese people built for the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, they planted secret cameras and recording, you know, gadgets. And they were sitting down there in China and monitoring everything, everything, every meeting, every business meeting, transaction, every meeting by the African leaders. They tapped everything. It took us years to realize that no, man, we're being tapped. But imagine if they were speaking Swahili. They would tap and tap, but hear nothing. It's like us tapping their meeting. Chin, chon, 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 chon. We will tap, but we will not hear anything. But thankfully, Swahili is also now one of the working languages of the African Union and one of the Southern African Development Community. And of the Southern African Development Community, the Southern African Development Community also uses Swahili as a working language too. Now, the Eastern African community created an institution called the East African Kiswahili Commission. They created an institution called the East African Swahili Commission. I mean, Kiswahili Commission. They call it EACK, which began operation in 2015. It began in 2015. The institution currently serves as the leading body for promoting the language in the Eastern African region, as well as for coordinating its development and usage for regional integration and sustainable development. The number of Swahili speakers be they native or second language speakers, is entitled to approximately two, I mean 200 million. It's, estim it's estimated, I beg your pardon, to approximately 200 million. The number of Swahili speakers, be they native or second language speakers, is estimated to be approximately 200 million people. Swahili developed historically by borrowing a number of words from foreign languages, particularly administrative terms from Arabic, but also words from Portuguese, Hindi, and German. Swahili developed historically by borrowing a number of words from languages, I mean from foreign languages, particularly administrative terms from Arabic, but also words from Portuguese, Hindi, and German. In relatively more recent times, Swahili has borrowed the most from English. Yet 16 to 20% of the Swahili vocabulary are Arabic loan words. When I say loan words, words we borrow. Including the name of the language itself, Swahili, Sawahili, Sawahili, a plural objectival form of an Arabic word meaning of the coast, of the coast. So Sawahili is an Arabic word and it happens to be a plural objectival from an, I mean from the, the language, which means of the coast, of the coast. The loan words date from the contacts of Arabian traders, Arabian traders with the Bantu inhabitants of the east coast of Africa over the last couple of centuries. That's where they got the Arabic, you know, the words they borrowed from Arabic into the Swahili from. That's because they got into contact with Arabic traders, I mean Arabian traders, around the um, coastal areas with the Bantu people, the Bantu people who actually are the original owners of the Swahili language. Over the last couple of centuries, which was also when Swahili emerged as a lingua franca, a lingua franca. Unlike almost all Bantu languages, Swahili is not tonal. It's not tonal. It is tonalless. It is not tonal. And this makes it more accessible as a second language. Makes it easier, very easy for people to access it, lay hands on it, I mean lay tongue on it as a second language. In 2018, South Africa legalized the teaching of Swahili in schools as an optional subject to begin in 2020. 
Botswana followed in 2020, and Namibia plans to introduce the language as well. Ethiopia and South Sudan have also begun the teaching of Swahili in schools. Shinkomo, Shinkomo, or Komoria, Komoria, an official language in Comoros and also spoken in uh, Mayote. Is closely related to Mamin Swahili and is sometimes considered as a dialect of Swahili, although other authorities consider it a distinct language. What are we talking about? We're talking about Swahili. The Swahili language is what we're putting in perspective in this edition. Why are we putting the Swahili language in perspective? That is because we want to draw our attention to something. As a people, we must have a common language. A people without a common language are a lost people. A people who borrow a language to do business. They borrow language for official meetings, for official delegations, official talks. It's a confused people. You go to Nigeria, Nigerians are on are, 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 are a step further. By wearing traditional wear, by putting on traditional ways, traditional regalia in their parliament house. They don't wear suit and tie. They only wear their African regalia to their parliament proceedings. That is a step further. But they wear that and go down there and still speak English. True English jargons at each other. As for Ghana, it is recently a, 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 a speaker of parliament decided to be wearing African regalia. Before even the speaker of parliament to wear something from Britain. And the members who put on suit and tie and they will also be throwing English jargons at each other. Vocabularies, English vocabularies, left, right, center. By the end of their proceeding, the ordinary Ghanaian sitting down there trying to understand, concentrate, I mean understand the concentration of their discussion will lose the substance because they were only trading in jargons, English vocabularies. Our finance minister does that. They come and all they use are terminologies to confuse the people. But imagine they spoke Akan, they spoke Ashanti, they spoke Dadbani, they spoke Hausa, they spoke Frafra, they spoke Fanti, they spoke Nzima, they spoke Ahanta. Just imagine my people. I am drawing your attention to something. We must have a common language to start with. Else, dilly dally like this. Else, this is where we are going to be. The core of the Swahili language originates in the Bantu, in the Bantu languages of the coast of East Africa. Much of Swahili's Bantu vocabulary has cognates. In the Pokuma, Taita, and the Majikenda languages. These are all Bantu languages. And to a lesser extent, other East African Bantu languages. Now let me tell you the percentage concentration of the loan words in the Swahili language. Arabic language. Mainly the Omani Arabic, Omani Arabic. Arabic is also in types. The Arabic, the Libyan speak, is different from the Arabic, Saudi Arabian speak. The Arabic, the Tunisian speak, is different from the Arabic, the Iranis speak. The Arabic, the Moroccans speak, is different from the Arabic, the Iraqis speak. Arabic is also in types. And the Arabic language... The Swahili borrowed words from is the Omani Arabic. Omani Arabic. You find 35% of the Omani Arabic words in Swahili language. 35%. You find 1.6% of English. You find 0.9 to 1.0% Portuguese. You find 0.7 to 3.9% of Hindi language. You find 0.4 to 3.4% of 
Persian language, you find 0.2 to 0.4% of the Malagasy language in Swahili. Omani Arabic is the source of most Arabic loans words in Swahili. In the next, in the text, early Swahili historical, I mean history reconsidered. However, Thomas Spear, the author, noted that Swahili retains a large amount of grammar, vocabulary, and sounds inheritance inherited from the Sabaki language, Sabaki language. And that is why it is easy, very easy to be used as an African language. Reason many are rooting for it to be used as an African language, official African language, because the borrowed words are more and almost everybody can understand and relate rather than picking a core indigenous language which is tonal, I mean, which is not tonal, uh, or which is tonal, I should say, it will be difficult. But with this, that's like Jamaican patois, where everybody can relate and many Africans want to relate and hijack. Same applies to Swahili. Almost African can, almost every African can 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 hear Swahili and understand one or two. So it makes it dif- easier. In fact, while taking account of daily vocabulary using list of one hundred words, seventy-two to ninety-one were inherited from the Sabaki language, which is reported as. A percent, I mean, a parent language, a parent language of the Swahili, I mean, language. Whereas 4.17 percent were loan words from other African languages. 17, I mean, 4 to 17 percent were loan words from other African languages. Only 2 to 8 percent were from non African languages. Only 2 to 8 percent were from non African languages. That makes it more, much more um, original, a bit original. Only 2 to 8 percent were non African. African. The rest are African. And Arabic loan words contributed a fraction of that. According to other sources, around 35% of the Swahili vocabulary comes from Arabic. What also remained unconsidered was that a good number of the borrowed term had native equivalents. The preferred use of Arabic loan words is prevalent. It prevalent along, I mean, it's prevalent along the coast where natives in the cultural show of proximity to or descend from Arabic culture would rather use loan words, whereas the natives in the interior tend to use the native equivalent. It was originally written in Arabic script. So if you go to the interior part, they don't use the loan Arabic word that much. But you go to the coastal parts because they are because of their contact with the Arabic, the Arabian traders, they tend to use the loan Arabic words the most. The earliest known documents written in Swahili are letters written in Kilwa, Tanzania, in 1711, in the Arabic transcript that were sent to the Portuguese of the Mozambique and their local allies. The original letters are preserved in the historical archives of Goa, India, not in Africa, India. It is 8 o'clock on the dots. I have a lot to tell you about the Swahili language, how the Kenyans use it, how the Tanzanians use it, how the Ugandans use it, how the Somalians use it. Uganda adopted Swahili, kiss Swahili as the official language in 2022, just this year, and also made it compulsory across primary and secondary schools in the country. Uganda, they adopted it this year. In Kenya, Kiswahili has been the national language since 1964 and it's official since, and it is official since 2010. Somalia, the Swahili language is not widespread in Somalia and has no official status nationally or originally. It is rarely taught in the educational system. The main foreign language are, are, languages are Arabic and English. 
Now Swahili has an impact on religion in Africa. It has an impact on politics in Africa. The role the Swahili play, the Swahili language played in the spread of religion in Africa, I'll be telling you next week. And the role the Swahili language played in the African politics, I'll be telling you next week. But in the meantime, in between time, time to draw the curtains down. On the historical checks, talks of the Swahili language. Let's continue next week for the sake of time. This is who we are, Africa. This is YFM. Y-F-M. 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 Y-